Welcome back guys. We're gonna do our full review today. We're gonna hit 100 miles about on this ride. Get really close to it at least. So it's time to talk about the Emu Touring. This will probably be the longest review on this scooter that I make. Hey guys, we're gonna interrupt for one second to talk about the electric scooter operator's manual I threw together. It's based upon the Motorcycle Safety Foundation's long-standing motorcycle safety handbook. And you can learn everything about your scooter, how to check it, how to control it, such as everything from stance to your knees to your hands to your feet, how to turn, how to safely operate the scooter in traffic is the main point of this. So if you have a faster scooter, be sure to check this out. You'll learn a lot on how to ride safely and avoid crashes. I'll drop the link at the top of the description. Feel free to share it with whoever you think needs it. Um, we're just gonna ride around and talk about it the whole time. I'm gonna compare it with my experiences with the 9bot Max and with the Xiaomi. So those are my other two beginner scooters that I've rode quite a, a lot. Uh, entry level scooters. I shouldn't say beginner scooters because even this scooter, if you only need to go like, you know, a few miles commuting to work, this is all you need. You don't need some crazy range or huge battery or high speed. Like, that's what this scooter is built for, is commuting. So that's why I'm going to compare, compare it with the 9 by Max or Xiaomi, which a smaller commuter scooter like that, they do serve a big purpose for a lot of people, you know, like so you guys watch my rides you see me out joyriding a lot which isn't really what scooters are intended for they're really intended for this to jump on it and to commute down to school or something it's about three miles or so down to campus you could do that in 10-15 minutes I usually start my reviews from the top to the bottom We'll start with the handlebar and go across it and talk about everything that I like and don't like. On your left. Definitely the bell is probably the top thing I like on the handlebars. So most scooters, they take a bell and they, they'll, if you're lucky, they'll add it onto the handlebars. And so you'll have a bell, but it's not really seamlessly engineered and so these guys with e-move i'll aim the camera down here have created this bell that's built into the brake and so that's definitely one of my favorite features of the handlebar of this i think we're going to cross the street here where were we oh the bell so the bell definitely is probably the best bell on any scooter and that's probably what everybody says about every bell but I've tried the 9 bomb Max and the Xiaomi bells for comparison they work all right but they don't sound this amazing this is both that it sounds amazing which makes everybody smile okay and it's built in it's ergonomic you don't have to reach for it you don't have to do anything crazy you just literally bang the bell so that's probably my favorite thing on the handlebars. On the, on the left side here we also have this switch and a beeper. Which I don't know if I've used the beeper for you guys yet, but that's I'll use it after we get past this lady so she doesn't think we're beeping at her. We'll just use the bell for now. Thank you. I like your dog. So yes, the lights and then this beeper here, you can test it. it. Sounds like a UPS truck backing up to me, but it could be useful in certain situations, so it's nice to have it. Next we can talk about the grips. So I'll try and show you, they're ergonomic shaped to your hand which I like better than the round grips. There's really two styles of grips that people use, and there's ergonomic or there's round, and the round are not as easy to hold on to as the ergonomic, and they I think they give you more hand cramps quicker. So I think I'm happy with these grips. 
they're kind of like small. I think if you had huge hands, you might have an issue. <laughs> We're gonna creep by. She's got the all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive uh, stroller there. It's very nice. <laughs> Let's talk about the folding handlebars for a second. I could show you guys that. So all you do is you pull these like this and it folds down. I'm not gonna do this side because I have this on here, but it's a little tight on this side, but if you slide everything to the edge, you can get it to work and come down. They do come a little bit loose, I think. It's very easy to tighten that back up, but I think it is something that it might continually come loose a little bit, so you just gotta keep tightening it back up as you go. So that might be one of the only faults on this scooter, really, that I've seen so far. I think there's two, two faults in total, but that's the, the biggest one, is that the handlebars do come a little bit loose. We'll talk about the other biggest fault in a little bit here. It's a bit farther down the scooter. So we can move to the right, which we've got a standard key throttle. It's nice to have a key throttle over just a button like a 9 by Max or M365, because when you go to a store, you can leave it out front of say a gas station or something if you just want to run in quick. and take the key out and it's a bit more safe than just leaving it right there like a Xiaomi or Max the guy just hits the button and he's and the thief is gone right so shoot we should just get on the bus do a bus test right now wait at this sign right here do we need to do a bus test though I don't think so that's the thing That's a fucked up sidewalk right there. It was like a constant struggle to fix the men around this town because of the winters. Winters are harsh. The potholes are fierce. All right, we're gonna hit the street now. And hopefully there's a bus coming and there's a car. So we're gonna have to hurry up and get it over to the bike lane. It doesn't even start until a little bit here, like a block. We'll pass this guy to get in the bike lane. The bike lane starts right up here. I don't know how fast the biker is. He could beat us. There's some gravel and stuff. It gets a little sketchy in this bike lane, to be honest. A little sketchy. <laughs> Our bike lanes are kind of filled with gravel and acorns and crap like that everywhere. Sand, all kinds of stuff in it. So it's just, I think you could write a whole driver's manual just on how to ride in the bike lane. <laughs> like this guy, we gotta stop for him legally. Go ahead. Have a good one. See, if you're in your car, you can't tell the guy have a good one because your window is blocking you from the rest of humanity. On a scooter, you can tell whoever you want have a good one. I'm not really going to talk about the throttle too much because this is a standard throttle that you guys have definitely seen before on a lot of different scooters. It works well. It's apparently waterproof because of the IP rating of the scooter. I haven't tested it, but as far as the throttle, it's pretty good. So 
sometimes you just gotta walk it for a second. There's a bunch of tours and stuff going on. We should go test it through a building. I'm sure you guys wanna see how portable it is going through a building. It's like, look, I get it. This scooter is, is good for going to class. That's what it really shines at. So why not take it to class right now? Nice thing about public buildings, they always have to have a wheelchair accessible button. Easy to lift down a few stairs like this. No issues. See, nobody will stop you going through a building like this. You just walk like you own the place. <laughs> I don't think anybody even knows anymore if masks are required or not. <laughs> Easy. Back up the stairs. I think you could do a a flight or two of stairs with the, the scooter easily. Whoop. Doesn't quite have the clearance to go downstairs. <laughs> so sorry if we uh, just scratched up your free scooter, whoever wins this. But yeah, there you go, it easily goes in there. It's a fun little scooter around uh, campus for sure. This is where it's really designed for. It's just cruising through people. This is a ramp. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Get some air. I've got distracted. We need to get back to the review now, don't we? Okay. We've talked about the whole handlebars as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about the braking. And while we're talking about the braking, I'm going to take you down the steepest hill in town right over here. And we'll test the braking. Not really test it, but just show you. So it only has a rear brake. It leaves a lot to be desired, if that makes sense, compared to a dual brake scooter. Here we go, let's see if it'll stop. Oh, of course there's a fucking person with the hose on it. <laughs> we have to jump it. <laughs> but as you can see, it's just very slow braking. So the brakes leave a bit to be desired, but the, the reality is they work. If you're not going down the biggest hill in town, they work fine. And they're low maintenance. That is the big selling point on them, is that you can tighten them with one hand in like three seconds. Let's test right here, into a brick wall. See, we did lock up our tire there. I've got it set hard enough now that it'll lock up the tire. If in an emergency, that's the best case you can do, you know? So just be careful, don't run around any blind corners or try and expect that you're gonna fast stop quickly with this scooter, you know? It's just not gonna happen tires let's talk about those for a second they're eight inch tires and so when you compare that it's the same as a xiaomi the max is 10 inch tires but it has no suspension so that's the trade-off is eight inch tires with suspension is it better than 10 inch tires with no suspension and the answer is definitely yes that it's definitely better a better ride even right now um, there's no sort of handlebar vibrations. There's no sort of bumps or anything over all every one of these little cracks It's just really really smooth comparatively Front is air the rear is solid That's meant so that you won't get a flat tire in the rear, which is the most common way to get a flat tire So that's Goes back to the low maintenance of this scooter it's low maintenance because of the, the brake, but also because of the tire. I was worried about the rear tire being solid that it would affect the ride quality, but I don't think it does. Not on this scooter, because the front's air and because the suspension is good. We could talk about the lights. 
As usual, there's uh, like a brake light. That's pretty standard on most scooters. And then some kind of headlight, which this one is down low down there, if you can see it. That headlight is pretty good at letting you be seen, but it's not necessarily good at, at seeing at night. So if you are gonna ride at night, you're gonna wanna get an extra headlight, and that's pretty standard on almost all the scooters. That they just don't, they come with a, more of a safety light, a backup light even. But you should really just get your own better light. Woo! Just talked about the headlight, let's talk about the rest. <laughs> the headlight uh like i was saying but there's two running lights in the front and there's uh two running lights in the back you can turn them on with the little switch on the side of the deck those are pretty amazing to be honest that's way better than the xiaomi or max has so as far as like deck lighting, you'll definitely be seen at night. The rear brake light is actually bigger. I'd say it's about three times bigger than on a 9 by Max or a Xiaomi, which you, you guys know those use like the same light. For this price of a scooter, for an you know, entry level scooter, the lights are pretty impressive. We don't have the brakes for it. Move it! <laughs> Kickstand works well on the scooter too, by the way. I think we skipped the suspension there for a minute, so we're gonna talk about that. It's got two springs in the rear, but the front's got three. So one, two, three suspensions. All three of those move, and it works fine. This tire, I think it's tubeless. I didn't really check. It's a bit softer tire, so it does have a bit of give in it. So yeah, we talked about the suspension, how it looks, but how does it ride? Which is what matters, right? So, the feeling of it is great. It smooths out every, every smaller crack. Obviously, with the small tires, even on a big crack, you'll feel it. But for small bumps, even like that little bump, barely even like little cracks in the road, seams, stuff like that, it, it's perfect, all right? But on the bigger bumps, it does make some noise. It gets, we'll see it here in a bit, there's gonna be some big bumps. It kind of, uh, I think the rear makes some noise as well as the front, but there you hear it. So I can't give it a perfect score on the suspension. But as far as the feeling when I'm riding it, right, if I'm just riding and not thinking about the noise at all, it feels great, the actual ride quality. But it would be nice if they could get rid of that little noise like that, you know? And I get it, sometimes on a smaller scooter, maybe with the, the solid rear tire, that's a big ask and it might be impossible. Really the other main fault I've seen in this scooter this is a bit of noise from the front suspension you know when it's that and then the handlebar gets a little loose just two little problems that's not very bad for a scooter in comparison to a lot of other scooters out there trust me this one's got everything you need and nothing more really with enough ride quality to cruise around without like wishing you bought more suspension you know, because I, 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 I'm thinking back to my days when I rode the 9 by Max, and that thing, as good as it was, you had to bunny hop every crack. You had to, like, manipulate the ride so much to make it not as bumpy. Whereas this, you can just drive right over cracks, and it's, like, it's not hurting, going to hurt your back, or it's not going to hurt your wrists, you know, or your knees. It's not going to, over time, just tear you down, because you got that suspension there. I think some stuff needs to be said about Boro. They're right up there at one of the top companies that I recommend for a reason. And it's just because of consistent customer service. If a company the most of the time with everybody we deal with in our Facebook groups, you know, 
I don't have exact statistics, but I'd say like 90% of the time, people that deal with Boro have very good, very good reviews of it. And so that's the only reason I'm even hitting up with Boro in the first place is because they have a good reputation in the scooter community to begin with. And after earlier this year, there was a scooter that came out, I won't mention it, and <clears throat> the company has since basically flopped where now it takes weeks to get a response and the scooter was faulty and a lot of people really got burned on it almost. There's an eagle. Look at that. So it's good to deal just with companies that have good reputations, you know what I mean? Like I can't ever promote a company to you guys if I don't know that everybody else that deals with them is, is also having a good, not only just a good scooter, but a good company experience where they're, you know, responsive to your questions. They're willing to help you, you know, and that's what it really comes down to with these scooters is the main differentiating factor because you can buy a scooter here, there, or anywhere in these days, but it's who's going to help you, who's going to help fix it, who's going to help you you know maintain it so that it stays roadworthy it's a lot of a lot of ask and it, the people don't realize that when they're buying a scooter they yeah you're buying the scooter but you're also buying like the next year or two of who you're gonna be dealing with you want to be dealing with some terrible company look at this girl she's making tiktoks <laughs> I think this scooter is really maneuverable which comes with having eight inch tires is that you get really good maneuverability so it's even more maneuverable than the max the range seems decent on it so I did a range test and according to ESG's range test I was expecting to get around 15 miles but in fact I got about 20 miles and I actually weigh 20 pounds more than their test rider. So basically, it's got the range you need. Just, I don't know what they advertise it at. I never believe those anyways, but 20 miles is plenty of range for commuter scooter to get you there and back without having to charge at work or school. There's a groundhog, did you see that? At least when you live in a small town like I do, oh my gosh. She must be blaring it. The beeper doesn't work. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Get the gun it up this hill to make it. It's a big hill. I don't know if we're gonna get the pass on this girl fast enough. We can try it. Let's see what we got. Easy. What was I saying about the bell at the beginning of this review? Because it's the best bell on the planet, alright? Bells do not get any better than this. You saw her walking down our half, didn't you? Didn't you? <laughs> the law should be built about, built around getting people more safely to a place, more efficiently to a place, right? Built on those two, two most important safety, second most important efficiency. If there's, there shouldn't be any other thinking going into like the laws of how a scooter should, should come into society. Train people, and then let them ride. This is a scooter that you mainly want to stay in the bike lanes because it only goes 21. Unless you're like turning left like this, then you obviously have to get out of it. But here we go, right by the police station. And all the kids. It must be like preschool uh, field trip day or something. Riding safely and efficiently. Like I say, the balance that you have to find definitely as a scooter rider more more so than a car because a car you can't really there is no shortcuts to make 
make it more efficient. But with these, you know, you use whichever track is the fastest. So sometimes you take the sidewalk or the bike paths because you avoid the traffic or the light. The rough street will get you sometimes a few of the bumps, but the majority of the time, even on an average street like this, it's like not making much noise at all, hardly any. It's just cruising it over those cracks. Love it. So yeah, guys, after 100 miles, I think we uh, talked pretty well about the scooter today. It's got everything you really need in a scooter. So if you got any other questions, if I've missed something or forgot to talk about something, feel free to drop a comment and I'll, I'll let you know what I think. Thanks for watching. Scooter Gang, out.